The aim of this lecture is to discuss price interventions as a policy tool to correct for excess market power. After this lecture, you will be able to understand two types of price control mechanism, the rate of return, ROR, approach, and the price cap mechanism. Price controls must ensure that price charged by energy firm is aligned with the value of the goods and services provided, while accounting for market failures such as limited competition between companies and a high degree of market power. The first method to regulate prices is based on the rate of return regulation. This mechanism set the limit level ceiling of returns raw that the company can enjoy above its operating cost. For this reason, this mechanism is also called cost plus method. In accounting terms, the rate of return is the fraction of gross profit to investments level, that is a stock or capital net of depreciation. The rate of return can be expressed with the following formula. Revenues minus operating cost scaled by capital investment, must be smaller than a maximum rate raw chosen by the regulator. Operationally, how does the regulator determine the allowed total revenues, that is, the amount of revenues the regulated company is allowed to obtain? They are given by adding the value of capital expenditures, given by the amount invested multiplied by the maximum level raw determined by the regulator, to the operating expenditures. Then, the regulated unit price is the value of the total allowed revenues divided by the total quantity of goods or services provided, in terms of minutes, kilowatt per hour, etc. Ex post, the regulator adjusts the maximum allowed rate of return raw in a hearing process. If the ex post rate of return is higher than the ceiling raw, in the year after, the regulator will reduce prices. If it's lower than raw, the regulator will increase prices. The rate of return method has several advantages. First of all, it always guarantees the financial integrity of regulated firms. Secondly, it entails regular monitoring of profits. Lastly, it creates no incentive to reduce service quality, since all expenditures will be reimbursed in the tariff mechanism. However, there are several limitations to rate of return regulation. It provides no incentive to reduce costs and increase productive efficiency, because it relies on a cost-plus mechanism. Whenever a manager decreases its cost, the regulator will then cut the prices. Furthermore, it creates incentive to overinvest inefficiently if a raw is higher than the standard return on financial markets. Moreover, it poses the risk of accounting manipulation, so that the regulated firm might allocate costs not directly related to the provision of regulated services. For this reason, it's a demanding method in terms of informational requirement and so requires significant monitoring and administrative costs. A second and more recent method to control prices consists of imposing a price cap. With a price cap, the regulator defines a limit to the growth of prices of a single or weight average set of goods or services. Practically, it is expressed with the following formula. The price at a given time t is equivalent to the product of the price in a previous period t-1 multiplied by 1 plus the retail price index minus the estimated growth in productivity, the so-called x-factor. The price p can refer to a single or a weight average of a set of goods. The estimated growth in productivity x is based on an estimation of productivity change by the regulator and represents the cost reduction that the regulator wants to pass to consumers due to the expected productivity increase. In practice, the regulator defines the X factor and, in a multi product settings, how to evaluate the average price level, that is the way to apply it to every service. Additionally, the regulator sets the time period in which the constraint is valid the so-called regulatory lag. In Europe, the regulatory lag lasts around four years. The regulator firm is free to set single prices but must comply with the imposed constraints on their average level. How does the regulator choose the X-factor, the estimated productivity growth to set the cap? It can use historic growth rates to predict future rates, but of course it must adjust its estimates if 
In the past, there were low incentives for cost reduction, for example, due to the rate of return regulation. Using historical data might be difficult in some countries where data is not always available. In this case, as an alternative, the regulator can use historical changes in the prices of other regulator services or use other similar countries as benchmark. Whatever the method chosen, the regulator can also base the X factor on projections of future revenues and costs, similar to rate of return regulation. The rate of return regulation and the price cap are two common policy tools used by regulators to correct the price distortion caused by market power. However, their key differences are that, while the rate of return approach does not encourage productivity nor dynamic efficiency, a price cap does, and this can be particularly relevant for long-term investments, at least in cost reduction, but not in innovation. However, the rate of return can ensure a high quality of services that is not guaranteed by a price cap.